In Chapter 18 of The Mandalorian, Din Djarin and Grogu travel to Mandalore, seeking the living waters so that Din can bathe in them and absolve himself in the eyes of the Children of the Watch for his transgression of removing his helmet. Their adventure to the planet necessitated Bo-Katan Kryze helping Din and acting as a guide to reach the ancestral waters that have played an integral role in the culture of the Mandalorian people. As Din arrived at the living waters and began to bathe, he was plunged into the water's depths, resulting in Bo-Katan rescuing him and the two encountering a frickin' mythosaur. Talk about awesome. But aside from this being a really fun and cool moment, the inclusion of the Mythosaur has some very significant implications for the story of the Mandalorian and what could be coming to Mandalore and its people as the series continues to progress. For starters, let's discuss the Mythosaur and its historical and cultural significance to Mandalore and the Mandalorian people. Mythosaurs were creatures of gigantic proportions found solely on Mandalore, and according to the plaque that Bo-Katan read to Din in Chapter 18, Mythosaurs were allegedly tamed and ridden by Mandalore the Great, an ancient Mandalorian that led Mandalore and waged a series of conflicts against the Jedi Order. Mythosaurs were believed to have gone extinct, but its skull became the traditional signet of the planet Mandalore and the Mandalorian people. By the reign of the New Republic, as we've heard the armorer tell Din, songs of Eon's past foretold the Mythosaur rising up again to herald a new age of Mandalore. The inclusion of the Mythosaur in Chapter 18 suggests that, just as the armorer said, Mandalore is soon going to herald a new age, and a new leader of Mandalore will emerge to reunite the Mandalorian people once again. In Mandalorian culture, Mandalore was the title assumed by the sole leader of the Mandalorian people. Most of us would argue that all signs are pointing to Din becoming the next Mandalore, as he's already shown time and time again that he's a virtuous hero that people could gravitate towards. An argument could also be made that maybe it's Grogu that will become the next Mandalore, but that's a topic for another day. Nevertheless, not only did Chapter 18 reveal that Mythosaurs are not extinct, but that revelation, along with the fact that Bo-Katan was the person that actually saw the creature, could have very huge implications for where the show might be going from here. So let's dive into why Bo-Katan seeing a living mythosaur could be problematic for Din. As seen in the Clone Wars and in Star Wars Rebels, as a former princess, Bo-Katan has previously assumed a role as a leader of the Mandalorian people. In Season 4 of Rebels, she was given the Darksaber from Sabine Wren without winning it in combat, hoping that her possession of the ancient Mandalorian lightsaber would reunite her fractured people. Bo-Katan then led her people during their fight against the Empire, but was eventually shunned due to the fact that her possession of the Darksaber was viewed as ill legitimate since she didn't obtain it after defeating someone in combat. After the Empire destroyed Mandalore in the Night of a Thousand Tears, Bo-Katan then became a cautionary tale for the Mandalorian people that survived the Great Purge of Mandalore. Even though she's previously been shunned by her people, as we saw in Chapter 18, Bo-Katan has no problem with reminding others that she comes from a royal bloodline of House Kree's. In addition to that, she's a strong fighter, one who can wield the Darksaber with ease, unlike Din, and once had many individuals follow her because of her acumen as a warrior sprinkle in there that she has now seen a living mythosaur, a creature of huge importance to Mandalorian culture that was synonymous with legends surrounding one of Mandalore's greatest leaders, and Din may now have himself an antagonist for the rest of Season 3 of The Mandalorian and maybe beyond that. I could see Bo-Katan saying, look, I've mastered the Darksaber, I come from a royal bloodline, I saw a mythosaur, so I'm meant to lead my people. Bo-Katan may believe that she's destined to once again work to reunite the people of Mandalore and rebuild their destroyed homeworld, as I'm sure she's well aware of the legends about a mythosaur rising again to herald a new age of Mandalore. But how exactly would this be problematic for Din? This is where the Darksaber comes into play. If Bo-Katan believes it's her destiny to become the next Mandalore, she knows she'll need the Darksaber to be able to reunite her people and to get people to rally around her. However, our homegirl isn't dumb and, this time around, she knows that she'll need to claim the Saber in combat. And since Din is the person that is the legitimate owner of the Darksaber, this is where things get dicey. This means that Din better start figuring out how to wield that Saber a little bit better better real fast, because I think it's only a matter of time before Bo-Katan starts gunning for his buns and challenges him to a duel for possession of the Mandalorian lightsaber, just like Paz Vizsla did in the Book of Boba Fett. Even if I'm totally wrong about Bo-Katan, the inclusion of the Mythosaur in Chapter 18 is a big deal because, as Songs of Eon's past suggest, we're witnessing the rise of a new leader of the Mandalorian people, one that will restore Mandalore and reunite Mandalorians that are spread out across the galaxy. But what's your thoughts? Do you think Bo-Katan will challenge Din for the Darksaber. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you like this video, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and making sure you subscribe. Follow the channel on TikTok at SW Transmissions. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you.